This is Group 8's autonomous car video. We will cover the autonomous driving, manual control, localization, video, as well as speed control and turning. We will now discuss autonomous driving as well as turning. The sensor system stays the same from Project 5 with two ultrasonic sensors. When the autonomous mode begins, the car finds the distance from each side to the wall. The logic will favor using the right sensor to track the wall. When the right ultrasonic senses a large jump between readings, the logic will switch to using the left sensor. The new capability that was added to the autonomous mode was turning. We programmed custom IR beacons for each of the four corners. Here are two working demos of the car turning left. When the car passes the corner, the IR beacon is detected. The beacon is constantly sending out a left turn signal. While turning left, the logic also checks for obstacles in front of the car. We'll now discuss localization. For localization, we kept the same approach by using Arduino XBs in API2 mode. The node program reads RSSI signals strength from the XB beacons and compute the current location of the crawler according to the predefined locations of the beacons. For this particular challenge, we made improvements by rescaling the coordinates of the layout page and calibrate the X and Y positions of the beacons. The Raspberry Pi with the coordinator receives RSSI signal strength from the XB routers which acts as the beacons. The coordinator is attached to the Pi which is located on the top of the crawler it processes RSSI values and generate X and Y coordinates of its location. This demo footage shows position of the crawler as it moves across the room. The movement is displayed as the website updates. After the position of the XB coordinator has been received, it is displayed on a graph using Plotly.js, which is being updated in real time each time the position of the XB changes. Now for manual control and website design. Alright, so this is the remote control in action. So pretty much it is a web app um, hosting a Node.js server on the backend and then you can just see it, it has both and you can press a go left, uh, go right, go left. So you can pretty much control it pretty easily and then you can even make turns by just clicking right. And hit it. Yeah, so it's pretty wow. good. Nice. All right, so this is the website. Uh, it's an HTML page, and then uh, it just has these buttons with some styling with speed up, speed down, and then all those buttons are just are just um, functions, um, and then the function are uh, are defined later. Um, so yeah, so you can see, and then you can have the um, the iframe, you have the map, and then you have socket IO for the speed, and then you have this script. This script is pretty much all the function, and then what it does is that as soon as you press one of those buttons, it actions one of those functions. Does it just emit a message to socket that are you to the backend? So yeah, so this is how it works. You press a button, one of the functions get, get executed, and it sends data to the backend to socket that are you. All right, so this is the server. So the server has two main components. It has the serial port declaration. It has the socket that are you. So this is a serial port declaration. There are many serial ports because you have many Arduinos connected to the Raspberry Pi at the same time. But in this case, for the remote control, we only care about the first port, which is which is the port, the port one with the border of 9600. So this one is a socket IO, and socket IO for chat message is the one that sends message from the back from the front end with the with the function you saw before to the back end. So you get the message and you just SP that right, which send it to the Arduino to serial port. And so these these are pretty much um, the XBs and all the calibration part parturition that happens, and th this is how the XB communicates f uh, to um, between each other through through the serial ports and everything. So yeah, so use uses some trial iteration. So this thing is is mostly used only for the map, and then as soon as if I go back to to our case, as soon as some data is sent. From the front end to the back end, it is it is uh, used afterwards in the. 
All right, so the way we approach the uh, speedometer is, qu is quite simple. Uh, we just use the uh, equation D equals RT to calculate the, um, the R, which is the rate of the speed the car is moving. And um, we just try to calculate the distance and the time. The time being um, the amount of duration that the sensor sees the white strip of paper. So imagine this picture with, of the wheel uh, with a white strip of paper that spanned about 120 degrees. Um, so we to calculate the length of the R, which will be the distance plugged into the equation later. We get that 2 pi R is, uh, times 120 by 360 which roughly gives about 0 0.21. Um, so this 0 0.21 then gets plugged into the D equals RT equation and we try to isolate R by doing 0 0.21 times time, uh, 0 0.21 divided by time. Uh, the time will constantly change and will be reset every uh, five iteration. Um, so as if you imagine the car is spinning, um, the, uh, the time that the, uh, um, the sensor sees the white strip of paper will, will dramatically change each, each iteration depending on if the car is on or not. Um, and uh, we just basically output onto the uh, website uh, a variable called C speed, which stands for the call of speed. And then show the wheel. Uh, so we were able to get the video feed uh, that was coming from the front of the car uh, with a few steps. First, we installed the motion package, uh, which is a library that's built by developers to output the video feed uh, from any webcam that's connected to the Pi. Uh, after that was installed, we just had to configure some settings uh, in its configuration file um, that was uh, playing around with the, within the height, uh, the video frame rate of the webcam, um, also the quality of the video, um, depending on the, uh, the latency of your network. Uh, we tried a few different combinations, actually more than a few, uh, to get the maximum um, and the most smooth image um, from the webcam. Um, and then, after the configuration was done, we basically just port forwarded it um, to 8081, which was set by default. default. Uh, and then, once we saw the video coming in, uh, we basically embedded an iframe to the main website, uh, which was showing the localization and the main control um, uh, down below um, to be able to see the video feed coming in.